You know, it's, it's not always nice being bullied and, you know, it's anyone that feels a bit different can always relate to that. You know, I grew up in a very, very much town where I thought I was fairly normal. But um, when looking back, I was 100% not normal. Um, but I always was able to, I don't know, maybe it's, it's a creative thing that you sort of go into a fantasy world where you just ignore everyone and you just carry on anyway. I don't know whether that's like a successful thing mm -hmm. or, or like you said, like an armour, you know, to protect yourself. So you just do it anyway, but you just ignore everyone else. Do you think like um, growing up but being affected by that has um, influenced the way you dress, do you think? Because you do look like you're wearing armour. <laughs> Definitely. I am literally wearing chainmail right now. Like, <laughs> and was it um, always this, and... you know, was it always this flamboyant or have you built it up over the years? Like, how have you built up your collection? So as a teenager, I would dress in um, six inch platforms, square platforms and go to the shops with like big flared um, jeans and um I would choose like really weird looking jeans, like either hip hop or like hippie. And then um, I got lost in the goth scene and then the cyberpunk scene in Birmingham um, at the time. And I would only wear certain things. And then this weird stage of wearing Versace and, you know, like loud Versace and cyber goth and a bit of Dolce & Gabbana because I, you know, I started to discover these things on fashion TV. Um, and then I remember seeing John Galliano's show and my whole mind just twisted after seeing those things. Um, and also La Croix and other things, you know, as a, as a teenager, I would start to kind of really experiment and I'd wear my mum's Elizabeth Arden makeup and I'd be like orange <laughs> and heavy eyeliner. And she taught me how to do flicks and she taught me how to do my eyeliner. And um, because I, you know, looking at her pictures in the 60s, she, she didn't mind, and I probably wasn't even out then. So um, when I came out, I started to dye my hair. No, it was before that. I had blue hair, blonde, like bleached blonde hair and green hair. So, yeah, that that's, was... That's amazing <laughs> that your mum taught you that. Um, so Mum's amazing. I mean, you've, you know, you have all these people, but they all support you and love you, and, you know, you're... You've become ov obviously uh, an activist and uh, a representative and almost like a voice for a lot of the eccentric, not eccentric, but you know, people that are a little bit different and um, you know, for your community, like you have built up a very special community and you know, a fan base, you know, um, you know, what gives you the um, sort of drive for that? How do you, um, you know, like where are, <coughs> you know, like having that whole voice, you know, what makes you want to do that, you know? Um, why do you think there's like, because you've taken that role and I feel like you are like globally a role for your community in UK as well and everywhere else, everyone knows you and, you know, what is it about, um, mm. is that giving you, what's giving you the support? How are you doing it? Because it looks like you're doing it all by yourself. You know, how are you getting the energy to do all mm. this amazing um, I don't know. I love working. I love people. I love trying to do my best. Um, when I was younger, I went to stay with the Maasai for a while and I saw some amazing, amazing people in terrible, terrible situations. And the, the beauty of these people and realizing that how privileged my life was back then. Um, I, it changed the way I thought about the whole world. And then something bad happened to me when I got back to London, I had a breakdown. Um, and then realizing that people sometimes listen. And I knew, I think also at school, I was taught about climate change. So, which is kind of rare. So I represented the school at a really young age um, to try and make the environment, it was called the, you know, to make the environment better back then. And I think that's where the love came from. And then I got involved a bit later with Vivian Westwood. That was over 10 years ago now. Um, but I've always fought for um, LGBT rights. So I tried to get involved with other 
things like Pride, and um, sometimes it never worked. And we see now all the Pride committee just quit, and that's why things like that never worked. Um, so uh, I worked on um, anti-fracking, and we managed to stop fracking in Balcombe by getting drunk in a pub and telling a farmer what's going to happen to his land. Rather than standing out on the street protesting, we spoke to somebody who was the right person I managed to stop that. And then um, then there was the whole Burn Punk London with Joe Corey, um, where he protested against the government for celebrating punk, which was more of a creative thing. Um, and then I've, I've worked with uh, activists like Pamela Anderson and Cool Earth. Um, I've been an ambassador for Cool Earth, I still am. And we try and raise money and awareness to save the rainforest. So that what they do is buy up um, the trees and the land and they give more money than the loggers so they actually then give it back to the tribe and um, make sure they don't knock the trees down because that's what's happening so they're an amazing charity um, and then there have been many other subjects but um, recently I've been working on the Ghanaian situation um, where they have been um, abused by their government and also from trying to help some refugees at the moment it's very hard because of covid um and i've started a thing on clubhouse which has become a, a group of activists over the last month getting together and we've invited people on and try to speed all the processes up so i just do my best but i know that i was helped a lot when i was younger and i always appreciated that help um and i know how important it is to be kind to someone because I, I experience a lot of kindness from people. And the other thing is I try and do one good thing a day at least. It doesn't matter what it is for someone. Maybe someone doesn't know about it, but I do it. And that kindness we miss so much in society. I'm not an angel by any means, <laughs> you know, that I have flaws like everyone else. So, um, but I just do my best. And I know I'm in a position where I know all these fantastic people from the art and fashion politics wherever and I it's like social alchem alchemy I, I'm like I met you and you and you need this and we can connect this and make that happen so you know even freedom of speech with WikiLeaks I've helped on you know, bringing Lady Gaga to Julian Assange and things you know small things but that's not small um, that's pretty big yeah. <laughs> so that's uh yeah people that are feeling quite lonely and have been in your position and stuff you know what can you what words of advice can you give them to help them you know because obviously you didn't give up and you had people to help you but for those where can they go or you know what would you say to them that's listening that feels like alone i would say go online find support find people like you if you can't go online try and find people in your area or a friend or someone really don't give up on your vision ever um anyone that's ever made it and that you look up to have not given up they've gone through good and bad and that's part of the journey um all the rejection and throwback is just part of it try not to take it too too much on the you know it does hurt sometimes but um and just keep going and if you you know you create something special and do your own thing um, and that's what matters in the, in, in the arts. Like when you do your own thing and stop copying everyone and like you do, Lan, like you're amazing. You, you create original, beautiful works and you're, the way you, it, it's gorgeous. And, and sometimes you may do something which no one understands. And that's the best thing because um, later on they will, you know, and 10 years time they'll look back and go, wow, that was very cool. Even when we're not here, they, they'll still look back and go, wow, that was, that was amazing, you know? So I, all these things that are out of the box and everyone says no to, and you, everyone thinks it's a bit too weird and a bit too, um, just ignore them uh, and keep going. And, and creativity is, it, it doesn't matter how you work, you just keep going. And if, if you have, so I plan a vision and I'm like, I'll do it like this, 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 but I actually, in reality, I can't structure any of this. So I just float through it and create as I go along. So um, that's the way I work personally. And other people have to go, I've got this plan of, and I just can't work like that. So um, yeah, and then and dream. You know, I get a lot of ideas from dreams. I love and that. 
dream. Dreams and write your dreams down. They're really like this book that I've got here. Mm. Um, these were um, dream shoes. <laughs> I dream yeah, about wonderful. shoes. Yeah. Um, but they were all, they were literally dreams that I had. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is my dream journal. And I so, love that you've got like you're still working from a notepad and a book and sketching. So yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. Uh, me and too. I always have a pen and I'm like. Yep. So I go to. We're going to sleep like this with, with a, um, <laughs> a hairband on my hand. Yeah. And if I have anything, I start drawing. Amazing. And then I have to, what I have to do is open one eye, look at it and go, okay, that's what that meant. And then if I fall back to sleep in the morning, I look at it and I go, oh, I dreamt about that last night. And um, that's, that's how I work. And that's how Dali worked as well. Wow. So. Amazing. That's a great yeah. tip. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> dream and write it down and keep a notepad on your side and tie it to yourself. Mm -hmm.